Cool. So, um, welcome to the future of Drupal functional testing. Um, yeah, let's 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 sort of um, discuss a bit about us, who we are first, before we get into the meat of it. So, myself, my name's Nick Shu, or at Awesome1989. Um, as you can see, I sort of touch a lot of technologies. I play with a lot of stuff. I'm very passionate about all these technologies. Um, I'm a, a guy from Australia, Queensland in Bundaberg, which is 36 hours away by plane. Um, so I'm very, very passionate about this topic too, to come here and talk to you about it. Um, I work for an agency in Australia called Previous Next. And yeah, we, I sort of deal with a lot of developer and sysadmin tasks and sort of bridge that gap and work with really sort of interesting problems and build out tools. So, so this kind of stuff's really close to my heart because I also maintain our internal test infrastructure. So this is the kind of things that I really like and I like to improve in core. My name's Karen Zemek. I've been PHP developer for over a decade now. Um, only been using Drupal since version 4.5. Uh, only this year uh, I started working at Previous Next and got into contributing to Core. And besides what we're going to be talking here today, I'm also involved in Drupal Module Upgrader. Um, and I'm the developer of the library that it's using in the back end called Farberist, which um, I'll be talking about later in a boff today with WebChick. And we're here to talk about functional testing, so I'm going to pass it back. Hi, everyone. I'm Konstantin, mostly known as Everzet. Um, I think I'm here today mostly because I created tools like Behat Mink, PHP Spec Prophecy, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about Mink a bit. So, yeah, I'm here just. Uh, as a voice of wisdom for those libraries, I guess. <laughs> cool. Um, so let's sort of get a little bit of show of hands. So um, who's actually who's written a simple test? Cool. In uh, how about Drupal? So in Drupal seven, who's written a test in Drupal seven? And then Drupal eight. Okay, so very, very, very similar. Um, who's used any other sort of crazy testing frameworks? Yeah, there's, a, there's some pretty cool ones out there, right? Yeah? Who likes to write tests? <laughs> okay, so first I wanna say thanks to the community. Um, this is purely from the fact that we've had a testing suite for six years now and it served us pretty well through that. I feel like today we released beta and I don't think we would have hit that milestone if we didn't have a test suite. <laughs> um, we couldn't put our hands on our hearts and actually say this thing works. So, and we've definitely ramped up the amount of test coverage that we have in Drupal 8 to do that. So yeah, like a, a big thank you to, to what we have now. Um, I also wanna thank you guys for coming here because I feel like this is a, a an area that needs a lot of improvement, so it's good to have everyone here to provide a bit of feedback and start a conversation around this as well. So, uh, first off, so what is functional testing? So, put very simply, it's full stack testing, right? So, in the case of uh, this reveal JS thing, if I were to test it, I would be testing from top to bottom, I'd be testing like the node server, I'd be pointing and clicking around and checking its functionality, you know, flicking right, flicking left, is that on the screen, do I, do I see that? So input and output, just things that you would do every day to test if some, a feature that you've written actually works. Um, functional tests come in many different uh, types, so you could have smoke tests where you, you're sort of making sure that your product as a whole works for the most part. Um, so you got a little bit of reassurance around there. There's also like regression tests where you find a bug and you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna write that test that does X, Y, and Z and like before and then I'm gonna fix the problem and it's gonna go green and that's awesome. So, 
So that, that's sort of functional tests in a nutshell, right? It's that point and click stuff that we do every day to make sure that the stuff that we write is good. So the state of Drupal testing right now, as I mentioned before, we've had a test suite for about six years now. Um, we brought the simple test project on um, in Drupal 7 and started using that, which is great. It's awesome. Um, the only issue with that is over time, it started to be, the maintainer of simple test started to, or the, the team around there, there wasn't really much action going on there and we took it and then we started to maintain it and now it's it's forked we've we've morphed it into what we want and and how we use it so it uses um, and it uses curl and uh, simple XML to do the sort of browser operations of it and we maintain all that code so I know that Sun has put the maintainer, one of the maintainers of Simple Test has put a lot of hours into maintenance just of that library itself. And um, just think about, and I'm sure everyone else has sort of debugged through it and imagine if we could rely on something a little bit more solid and upstream and yeah, imagine what you could be doing. So um, I'm just gonna quickly take you through the stages of a test. So what, what actually happens in simple test as it stands. So um, first of all, we bootstrap the parent site. So that could be like the simple test UI that you're in on the Drupal site. That's, that's you bootstrapping it um, to perform operations to set up a child site. Um, that's also you running run test.sh on the command line, which our bot infra our test bot infrastructure runs. So that's that's bootstrapping the parent site. We then set up a child site under the simple test directory, which leverages multi-site to make that happen. So then you can get concurrency. So you could spin up like eight of these and then start testing around there. So yeah, bootstrapping a, a full Drupal instance there, which is pretty pretty costly. Uh, we then run the tests through our, our sort of custom browser, I guess you could say, and yep, curl, simple XML, point and click around, test what you want, you know, go, go to the home page, is the login form there, and then result back. And then after that, that, we then clean up the site and sort of put everything back to the way it was. So that's kind of the full process. So, and I sort of want to point out that those first two there, so the uh, sorry, the first three is more like the framework, the actual simple test like set up and tear down and yeah, the, that one in the middle is the browser. So. so I feel like it's time to, I don't know about you, but I feel like it's time to get off the island. Um, just looking through the code like and all that maintenance, like it's time to sort of leverage st things out there that everyone's already using and um, they're battle tested, so we, we should be doing the same, right? It's uh, just like Dries was saying in his keynote about sort of getting rid of all that, you know, getting rid of, um, you know, like leveraging other libraries so then we can focus on the awesome and cool stuff and maybe bring in extra features. So maybe like JavaScript testing or something along those lines, focus on the cool stuff that we really want. So yeah, time, time to get off the island, right? So this leads me to my, my first sort of technology that I feel that we should adopt, and that's PHP unit. Um, I like to think of it as a runner. That's why I got my little Lego runner up there. And, um, but really, it's a framework. It's a testing framework. Um, don't be disheartened by it's called PHP unit. It's not just for unit tests. It's, it's a really solid, extendable runner that we can leverage for this. Um, I also want to point out that we already have PHP unit in core doing our unit tests, but we sort of wrap it with simple test. So for us to adopt this wouldn't wouldn't really be that much work given we've you know we've already adopted it for one layer of our testing. So this is a, just an example of a very basic PHP unit test, just um, modifying an array and asserting that there's nothing in the array, just adding food to it, do we have a count of one, um, you know, ditching it, do we have a count of zero now, like that's, but if you look at that a little bit closely, 
uh, sorry, a little bit closer, you can actually see that that's in like a very similar format as to what we already run in simple test, right? Prefixed with test. Um, there's a cert equals, like we, we've got all those functions there and we maintain those. Um, there's a slight little bit of a name difference between I think it's a cert equal instead of a cert equals, but that's, you know, that, that's fine. We can, we can refactor that. So very, very similar. It also means we can rely on some contrib. We can bring in some contrib libraries. So like right now, I can get my nine cat when I'm running a full test suite. I can just watch that for about 45 minutes. That'll, that'll pass the time for me. So, but um, in, in all seriousness, like very extendable. We can do whatever we want with it. And uh, here's a few libraries that sort of catch my eye, right? So I see that there's a, you know, a PHP unit um, UI, which could maybe replace simple test UI. Right, we could ditch that code as well. We could get rid of that code as well, and we can we could contribute to these other libraries, or even make our own, right? And build a little bit of an ecosystem around that 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 small component. Um, there's a PHP timer library, and there's also a parallel testing library, all doing their own separate thing, right? Their own little little core. And I, and I think that's really, really cool because um, right now our run test.sh script does a lot and it's, and it's very untested. Um, like, I mean, the, the way that we test our run test script is by running it through the bot, but it'd be nice to actually have you know, some kind of test coverage on that as well. So let's remove it, replace it with a runner or a framework like PHP unit. Cool, I'll hand it over to the camera. Yep, so who, who's here used BHAT? No, you show of hands. So you're probably going to recognise this syntax. Um, we're going to a web page, checking the status of that page and filling in a form and submitting it. Well, the power of BHAT in this case is actually powered by Mink. It does the browser interaction with our website. So that's what I'm going to talk about briefly now. So what is Mink? It's, um, it's a browser emulator. It gives us control of a browser and interact with our website. It has two, we've got two types of emulation. We've got headless, which is done by the Goot driver. So that's similar to what we've got now. With simple tests, we've got all this code with curl and simple XML that's trying to emulate a browser. So instead of having all that code ourselves and maintaining that, with Mink, with the Goot driver, it will do that for us. So we could replace what we've got now with, with the Goot driver with the same functionality. But the beauty of Mink is we can also plug in a real browser. So it lets us control different browser backends. And each has their own advantages and disadvantages. So with the headless browser, it's nice and fast. Uh, but we don't have any JavaScript support. So at the moment, there's a lot of c code in simple, exam in simple tests that sort of half fakes the Ajax part when it comes to Drupal core. So instead of doing that and having all this code that's just trying to mimic Ajax, we could plug in a real browser with Mink and have proper Ajax support. So this is just a quick example similar to what we were just doing there before with BHAT but with just straight mint code. So this is in PHP and we can we start off a pick what driver we want, we start a mint session, we visit a page, we can find elements in the page using CSS selectors or XPath selectors and then we can click links, fill in fields, submit the page, press buttons. But as I was saying before, with Mink, we can actually control a real browser and have JavaScript support. So we can test drag and dropping, double clicking, right clicking, hovering over something and seeing if an element pops up. These are all things we can't do now with simple test. So if we were to use Mink, we could get all these extra functionality that we could test for in our functional testing. So that's what we're 
here today to talk about what we've been working on on getting it so we can use Mink and PHP unit in place of simple test. So we're not talking when we say JavaScript testing, you probably still want to do uh, JavaScript unit testing with something like QUnit. Uh, we're just more talking about having it so in our functional testing we can support rich web UIs with so because we've got full support for Ajax and JavaScript through the use of using Mink. So one of the problems with uh, when you're controlling a real browser with Mink is the browser is slower than the Goot driver. Uh, so I'm proposing for majority of cases we could use PhantomJS browser backend through the Selenium driver. It has a pretty good feature set. It's um, based on WebKit. It's a headless version of WebKit. So it's pretty close to what browsers out there are using now with Firefox, um, sorry, not Firefox, but Chrome and Safari use WebKit backends. So it's very similar in the way it renders web pages. Uh, and it's got JavaScript support. And it's in a single standalone binary, so it's pretty easy, there's less, it's pretty easy to set up, you just download the PhantomJS binary, you start it up, and then the Selenium driver will by default connect to it, if on running on localhost. So how this started was, uh, Lee Rollins started an issue um, to replace simple tests to use Mink backend. So he started, we started porting web test base as is because there's a lot of tests in simple tests for Drupal core that use web test base. Uh, and it, we got pretty far with that. We got down to under 200 fails and 65 exceptions. And we were doing this, making it backwards compatible, had decorated classes and all sorts of things trying to get the existing tests to work with it but it, it's a bit of a rabbit hole trying to get that going. So then we decided to start fresh and we also decided let's throw out um, the simple test runner as well and use PHP unit. So that way people, as I was saying before, there's some slight differences between the assertion methods with PHP unit and simple tests and m more people when they come to testing are more familiar with PHP unit. So by doing this with people that are used to PHP unit will be able to do Drupal functional testing in the same way because it's using the same framework that they're already familiar with. And then we're adding this Mink layer for the browser emulation. So when you're debugging your tests, you're not using all this thousand plus lines of custom code and having to go through curl and uh, simple XML and try to figure what it out what it's doing. You've got Mink and a lot of people are already using that with Vhat. So it's way more battle tested than, than what we've got now with simple test. Also that was um, Core has I was just in the um, in the next generation test bot meeting before and um, right now Core has roughly seventy five thousand assertions and um, quite a few edge cases. We hit a lot of edge cases when porting across. So it was um, after a meeting with Sun, one of the maintainers of Simple Test, that um, the easiest way for this to get into core was to commit it with its own test suite, so it tests itself, and um, and then we start porting tests over, um, mainly targeting the Ajax ones to begin with with JavaScript. Yes, yeah, so as Nick was saying, um, eventually, like it's not going to happen straight away to get rid of simple tests, but we're just here today to talk about how we can move forward to make that happen. So this is on the on the left before, this is what we've got now. We've got this forked simple test code. Um, I think we forked it in 2008 and it hasn't had a release since 2012. So it's pretty unmaintained. So instead of having all this forked code that is only specific to our project, we moved to using PHP unit which is used by pretty much every PHP framework. And then instead of having 
all that curl and simple XML and thousand plus lines of code doing browser emulation, let's use Mink. It's way more solid than what we've got and it will open up doors for having JavaScript support in our functional tests. So we can do full end-to-end -end stack testing with JavaScript front ends. So this is just a simple code, um, can't fit much code on the slides, of where we're using this new class that we've made, browser test base. So it's using PHP unit and mink and it just we've just got a simple wrapper over the visit function for mink that just takes a Drupal path and converts the URL into a URL and then visits a page and just checks that the page responded and, and with simple tests the child site's sort of protected so it handles being able to actually access the child site and then um, there's a bunch of assert methods we've added that are specific to doing web-based testing so this asserting there's a link on the page or asserting I can fill in a form um, and it's all just built on the assertions that PHP unit already provides so it's pretty minimal code. If you know Mink, you'll be able to easily follow browser test base because it's just Mink code wrapped up sitting on top of PHP unit. So that's what we're here today. We're just recommending we replace the runner and framework of simple tests with PHP unit, that we replace the browser code with Mink and agree on a way to do JavaScript testing with our functional testing. And we're going to have a boff after this as well to continue talking about that. And as Nick was saying before, we're going to commit browser test base, hopefully, into core and people can start using it to write their functional tests instead of using simple tests and then we've got a point forward of moving away from simple test. And if, if we can get people to help port some of the existing tests too, hopefully, who knows, even by 8.1 we can get rid of simple test. <coughs> so how we can get this in core, um, that's our repo where we've been working on this and that's the issue where we've been posting patches and uh, we'll post a patch later today that I've got working on the, the beta. So there's some current blockers with getting this into core, but um, we're talking this morning at Monetizing Testbot talk about how we're going to improve the testing infrastructure. So some of those improvements, and they need help with that, they're sprinting on that this week. Um, so we want to be able to have it so we can run PHP unit instead of having to necessarily go through run test script. Uh, we also want to be able to introduce some browser backend so we can do the JavaScript testing, so maybe bring Phantom JS into the test bot so we can then have the test bot run these JavaScript based tests and you can help these guys out on the Drupal infrastructure IRC channel. Yep. Or um, myself and Ricardo are a part of the Drupal CI initiative sprinting on that so if you want to contribute um, hit one of us up after this. So that's watching the video, these are the other talks that are on testing. There's the one from this morning about modernizing the testing infrastructure. There's one on later today on automated front end testing and, and another one on BDD testing with the hat. That's Boff. And there's yeah. Boff. What time is it? Sorry, Rika. 16, oh, 4.30. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and we're also going to have a boff continue on this in G001 at 2.15. Uh, <laughs> I'm not leaving that room. <laughs> uh, so now we'd like to open the floor to questions and discussion around this topic. So if anyone wants to come up to the microphone here, so it's on the recording.
So I'm just wondering for the browser test space, um, is there any sort of built-in support for internationalization or, or language or any, any kind of handling about that? Um, Translation strings? Yeah, well, because with Mink, you can pass in labels for fields. You can just use the translation on your labels to find that field. So you could go, I want to fill in the username field and use the translate functions of Drupal. So that's, so that's available? Yeah. Okay. I've got it to do that with the login form. I, go, I fill it in based on what you see. So when you read the tests, they kind of read like what you'd see on the screen. And then you just use the translation functions to give you the correct label for that language. So if you wanted to test it in another language, as long as you're writing your tests, your function tests to use the translate functions on your labels when you're finding elements, it will find them and fill them in. Oh, when can we remove simple test from core? <laughs> yeah, good question. Heckler. <laughs> he, he works for us, by the way. So. <laughs> well, yeah, this, so this, as I was saying before, we going the backwards compatibility route so we could like remove it. Um, we we're trying to do that for eight, but it wasn't going to work out that way. So in order to get rid of it now, we have to start writing test on browser test base, and there's also um, Sun's brought in kernel test base. So more and more tests are going to be written on kernel test base. And then f when we need functional testing, we move them to this. And then so hopefully over time, there'll be less needing tests running on simple test. And then at that point, we can go, we can safely remove it. Yeah, so basically, we'll set up a meta and then sprint on it, um, just like we would have um, with the, with the, uh, the page controllers and such, like just a everything in core that we've sort of converted over, same same process, a meta that sort of lists all the modules and then we could either ask the maintainers to review patches and make sure that they're, they're happy with the code coverage. Um, yeah, so. um, one of the big problems with simple tests, aside from everything else, um, is the way it tears down and creates a new site for every single test, and the switching to Mink wouldn't really resolve that, which means the test suite would take essentially just as long to run. Mm -hmm. That's true. Have um, you thought at all about yep. you know, how you can consolidate similar tests? Because these aren't unit tests, so you know a lot of them could probably okay. be consolidated into a single build. That's what I'm going to plan on working on next, speeding this all up. Because <laughs> um, at the moment, it actually goes for, through a full Drupal install, and most of the time, it's just a testing profile. And I've seen people play around with this before, so I want to just try and just clone it, just clone the testing profile, and that should significantly speed it up. Because, yeah, at the moment, just for a simple test, that one before, it takes about 16 seconds to install a site. And oh, that's just on my laptop, though. Um, and on the testing infrastructure, they use TempFS and speed it up a bit more. But, yeah, it still takes a fair few seconds to set up and tear the, down. The, the other thing is um, it's also how we test. So um, changing from this, um, what we've got right now, where it's either a unit test or a web test, um, as, as a part of the discussion with Sun, um, the maintainers of simple test, um, there was also this concept of sort of layers. So um, first you would unit test, do your really quick tests. Um, secondly, you would test your database drivers. So you would check, like, does Postgres work? Does MySQL work? Um, all good. So now we'll move on to um, sort of uh, functional tests, so fast functional tests. And I'll sort of com compare and contrast in a sec. But um, so, yeah, you go to your functional tests. And then from there, you do, like, JavaScript tests and, like, those really heavy browser tests. Um, and what that unlocks for you is the ability to nominate the fastest database driver for web test for functional tests. Um, it also enables you to fail fast on like on a unit test or a DB test and just not even do functional tests at all. Um, there's no point running a half an hour test suite if you know that your uh, database layer is broken. You, you'd be better off getting a feedback loop back quickly and fixing that and then seeing it go through. So. Yeah, it's an important but point that Nick was saying. Um, as we move on in Drupal lifecycle, we're going to have more code coverage with unit tests, and hopefully we can pick it up 
at that level before we even have to even worry about doing a functional test. And, and it's also a good spot to start to have a conversation on how we test. So definitely like bundling more things together in that one test, um, getting a clear idea of what should be a functional test, I think will minimize how many we have. So, um, Lee. Have, we also have a colleague of ours, um, Lee, on the on the Hangout. So, so he may ask questions or heckle. Yeah. Or... Uh, another thing that, that, I don't know if you can hear me, but another thing that uh, we're getting closer and closer to be, is once we remove all the exit calls from core is we should be able to do um, controller output testing via the kernel in the same way that Symfony does. So um, Cam was talking before about um, the MIG drivers. You know, there's a driver for browser kit. And um, yeah, anything we need to do in browser kit is handle the request. And so Symfony use it um, for their testing. They, they, their kernel just actually routes the um, incoming request through that and gets the response and does all their asserts against that. And there's no HTTP in it at all. So when we get there, that's another way we can speed things up. So your tests basically become uh, web server agnostic. So you're not testing Apache or Nginx or anything in that case. Um, but yeah, that, that's sort of like splitting it up into those two groups. So which ones do we really want a full stack test on, uh, this functional test, and which ones do we want just to go through the kernel? The other thing with the fail fast that you're talking about before, Nick, is when triple core controls the test runner via you know, a YAML file or whatever, then you could do that on a patch per patch basis. If you're working on a particular patch that you do want to fail fast, you could edit your YAML file as part of the patch because it's part of core and get that feedback loop. And then when you get to the point where you want to start running all the tests, take that out of your patch. Uh, more of a Mink question. So we come from a long way with simple tests, but what kind of uh, restriction or difficulties we might run into by using Mink? Because I don't know like which are the current users of Mink and if there's something as big as Drupal using it with some weird case. All right. Um, I think Mink is, Mink was on the market for quite some time. Um, we are using it extensively in BDD community, in B, B hat especially. Um, the only problem that you can run into is if you go rampant trying to write too many functional tests, then you will have really, really slow test suites. It's not a, like it's not inherent attribute of Mink; it's inherent attribute of functional tests. Other than that, I mean, it's it's averagely fragile. Again, because it's inherent attribute on, of the unit of the functional tests, because you're making so many interactions, or there are so many layers in between your application and uh, the actual user. You have UI, you have HTTP, you have browser. Um, it's like they will be inherently fr fragile. So as long as you keep the amount of functional tests to the bare minimum, just to to make sure that your application works, like smoke tests, for example, mm -hmm. you should be just fine, I guess. Um, so I don't think there will be m big difference in regards to uh, Mink is limited in something in comparison with simple test. I think it's kind of on the same level. Um, I think it will also allow you to have more options in order to do to do things differently. So this whole idea that sometimes you want you can use JavaScript, sometimes you can use Good or like headless browser, and maybe later on you can switch to the browser kit. The whole idea of Mink is that it provides single API for all of those drivers, which means you can, for example, start from the tests which go through and make real HTTP requests, like go to driver. And then later on, as soon as you kind of stabilize uh, your interactions with kernel, you can switch to browser kit and it will be completely transparent to the test suites. So your test will just make, start running faster because you're not making real HTTP requests. So benefits like this is just like flexibility and more options, I guess. That's what you will get. Otherwise, you still get pretty fragile tests, and you still get pretty slow tests, and that's what functional tests are, in a nutshell. Thanks. Um, 
just the question in, we're talking about um, kernel tests as well would um, so would we could write a driver forming to do the kernel tests for us as well that couldn't I mean? think you already incorporated as far as I know the, yep. the kernel into Drupal yeah right. so I think I think browser kit driver which mink already has mm -hmm. it shouldn't be that hard to adopt it yep. to what yeah. you already yeah. have We're We've looked at that browser kit driver. We'll we'll do it. We've just got to override the do request, just like the Google client. Yeah. We just got to remove the issue that Lee said before about the exit calls. So that's the blocker to that. Otherwise, we could I could have that have that today. But no, yeah. Yet. Someone remove the exit calls and make <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually have a question. Uh, you guys said that you kind of came up with your own assertion library built on top of PHP unit or using yep. PHP unit assertion. Yep. Uh, Mink comes out with its own like web assertion library, mm -hmm. which kind of um, is fine-tuned to, to page interactions and stuff, and it yep. also throws exceptions which have more contextual information towards the page. Okay. Like, for example, if it says, like, element not found, it can give you the context of where it tries to find the element and give, okay. like, this is a text around. Why aren't you using web assert part um, of the Mink? Yep, I actually look, looked at that enough essentially copied and pasted them, but right. instead of throwing <laughs> exceptions, I use assertions, okay. the PHP unit assertions. Yeah, you see guys, we, we need to find a way to do interoperability, actually. It's like yeah. not, not yeah. it's like the, the whole purpose of this is will yeah. make sense if we'll start copy-pasting. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, I agree. I, yep, Let's I agree yeah. on trying to remove that. <laughs> Pledge, even? <laughs> yep, pledge it. Yeah. Yep. So how, how would you do something like that with PHP unit? Then I guess PHP unit would just pick up the exceptions and... Yeah, and I mean, uh, all of those exceptions that Mint produces, they kind of... You can easily identify them because they all extend from or implement one single extension, exception class mm -hmm. or interface. Okay. You probably just need to extend PHP unit to know about those exceptions and what to do with them. Yep. That's Correct. Yeah, I okay. was looking at that, um, but I've been busy so far this at this DrupalCon adding remote code coverage. Mm -hmm. So now that we're using PHP Unit with our functional tests, we can actually do code coverage. Um, and I was running it before, just hitting a simple controller, and it comes up that that controller's got 100% code coverage. So really it's good. awfully slow though when you, when you do code coverage with functional tests. It's X debug code coverage is slow, but yeah, we will have to we'll have to put that as an item before getting serious reviews to to switch to using exceptions to using those exceptions. It definitely sounds like that's the way to go. On a general note, actually, uh, mm -hmm. I, I I really like initiative. I really like the the fact that you're going more towards like reusing the libraries that other frameworks are using, mm -hmm. and it's like it generally will improve the quality of Mink a lot mm -hmm. and will hopefully help it to improve quality of Drupal. But mm -hmm. at the same time, like it is important for you to be aware that like this is not a replacement for unit tests or mm. integration tests. Absolutely, uh, you need to push harder for having more unit tests and integration tests because mm -hmm. that's essentially where the beef of your quality assurance should mm. be. Yeah. So functional tests, because of, because of those like inherited attributes of it being slow and it being fragile, yeah. you want to keep those to the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. So like, um, I mean, in trying to make it very approachable, don't overdo it, I guess. Yeah. People kind of need to start from unit tests. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think um, actually having a meta and having some analysis on the tests at the time of conversion is a good reflection point to say, you know, is this the best way to be doing this test? And, you know, there is, as Nick was saying, 75,000 functional asserts in core at the moment. And, you know, actually having a broom and, you know, having to hold the hand of those and move them over to the new system is a great opportunity to scrutinise them a bit more. Yeah, we're ta um, tackling the testing issue on multiple fronts. One is we're going to have more unit tests, and then Sun's been working on kernel test base, which is doesn't set up a site. It just bootstraps Drupal, so you can do test Drupal APIs and just install the module you just need to for your test. So that's 
the second layer and then at the top you have functional tests when you want to test that something works from the end user point of view that full web stack with rich web UIs and that's what we're gaining by bringing in Mink here that we don't have now with simple tests is we can test our website with its rich web UIs. And I think it's going to help both sides of the coin as well. So with the with the Drupal CI side of things, I think that's going to enable us to to do this change a lot a lot easier. But then from our side, if we're refactoring our tests, it's also going to help it, the test runs because, uh, like Ricardo mentioned in the the last talk for the modernizing test bot, um, CPU is a big deal on our test bots. So if we can definitely look at how we test the module and try and get way more unit tests in there, then we're not spinning up like eight concurrent sites and clicking around and and um, yeah, s smashing our CPUs basically. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Right. Talking about functional testing and stuff like that, you know, there's the B hat extension, <laughs> and yep. because again, if you're going to be writing a lot of stuff in Mink, since Mink is the kind of underlying of mm. B hat, it would probably be useful if we could, the B hat extension could reuse some of it. Just because again, if you write mm -hmm. it all in the tests, it's going to get buried in the tests, and then you're going to end up with people and contrib modules probably rewriting it because yeah. they don't know it's there because that always happens. So would it be nicer to, sort of, as I said, either push it up a layer? Or at least expose it as a list of like reusable components yep. to allow us to like when we extend, say, core to do certain things like our own modules and stuff, that we actually mm -hmm. have this set instead of it just getting buried. Yeah. Which I think I can take this one. Yeah. Um, I didn't look deeply into the hat extension, but I um, I looked into it in different lifetimes, and I would talk to his Jonathan this morning about Jonathan is creator of the hat extension. If somebody doesn't know, um, so. I think there is a lot of really smart and really cool things in it, like the wall abstraction over Drupal, the way to control uh, or talk with Drupal through different drivers. It's kind of along the lines of what Ming does to the browsers. And I think this is something that you definitely can y reuse and should reuse in your functional testing tools. Mm -hmm. And I know Jonathan is thinking about extracting it into separate library outside of Behat extension, so it will be reusable, I think. He would get, any, he would like to get any help from you guys. You can de yeah. deliver to him. I think it's it's a good initiative, and it's like you, yeah. the last thing you want to have is to have like segregated, isolated yeah. things that mm -hmm. work in isolation, completely in complete isolation from each other. Yeah. You kind of want to reuse amazing things that you create together. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we should get talking. <laughs> we definitely should. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Uh, oh, cool. Since uh, B hat did come up, I'd like to mention an idea I had, which is I think it's great to do all of the functional testing we currently have using Mink and not convolute B hat with trying to fill a gap. Um, but I think at the same time, it would be very a very worthwhile and valuable exercise to write B hat tests. BDD tests for, you know, the standard installation profile as an exercise to see if as a community we can figure out, yeah. is this thing behavior driven? Does it do something? Oh, uh, okay. Yes. And if not, you know, look really hard at yeah. why do we have a standard installation profile and maybe make it something that is understandable through BHAT tests. Okay. So, so sort of test. Okay. Yep. Well, I think um, I need to be really clear there. I think using BHAT without doing BDD is a very inefficient way of doing anything. So um, it doesn't force to even try to bring BHAT in if you're not planning to do behavior-driven development. Um, I think there is a benefit in doing behavior-driven development for a small fraction of Drupal for the core. Uh, but I think ev evaluation should go um, around the methodology itself, behavior BDD, not the BHAT as a tool. Because if you decide to go with BDD, definitely BHAT will, will help there. But if you just decide to go with BHAT just for sake of BHAT, it will kind of damage you more than it will help. Yeah. 
So yeah. Yeah, because um, in my mind, B hats like gives you you can create your own domain language about your site. So if you're doing like a shopping site, you might come up with terminology for that and develop a domain language around that and specify your tests in that domain language on how you're going to test a site. And we're talking more just like at a functional level. And you're saying at the, with the standard profile, you might be able to come up with some yeah, terminology around that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and because yeah, you've yeah. got... I think there will be a huge. I think there will be a huge benefit in it. It could streamline the way you communicate or the way you document the core behavior of, of Drupal. But again, that's the kind of different conversation to what we're having right now. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I I def well just to quickly extend. I definitely think the the standard install profile could could be debated that that it is kind of a product in some ways. It's kind of like a distribution because it's like. This is Drupal. <laughs> like you install it. This is Drupal, and and get get started and go. It's kind of selling it like a product or or an in, yeah or a distribution. So yeah, I'd I'd like to be a part of that. <laughs> Just on a. Anyone else brave enough to ask a question on the mic? <laughs> What are we doing with the time? Still got 15 minutes. Anything, anything else? Um, no, Jibran. So we are doing all of this because we want to test JavaScript uh, and you know double clicking and stuff like that. Because right now in core there is no way to do that. Mm. So on after what stage we can do that? After what stage can we do that? Um, so I'd say it's it's a bit tricky because, like I mentioned, there's two sort of two sides to the coin. I'd, I'd definitely say once once it gets once this browser test base gets committed, everyone can do it. Um, they could most certainly um, use it for their uh, their projects as well. Um, it's a little bit trickier to get it going on our current infrastructure on our testing infrastructure. Um, to spin up something like uh, like Phantom JS, like that's that's a bit interesting to make that happen. So, and would take a little bit more work. So that's kind of like the the follow up after the the um, after we commit this. So, and and we would also we also need to have a discussion around drivers. So how how would you declare um, this is a Phantom JS and this is a and I want to use this for this test, like this other driver for this test. So that's that's kind of a, a bit of a gap right now, I would say. So this is kind of just filling the hole of um, or swapping out components right now. So then we can start moving on to these kind of really interesting issues. Yeah. Demo. Demo. <laughs> Uh, and just before um, about JavaScript testing, I don't think we have a lot of JavaScript bug on uh, functionality. It's always about you know some little thing that breaks the JavaScript and then it doesn't work. So I don't think there's going to be a huge value, well, currently, uh, for JavaScript testing. I mean, there is when we refactor, mm -hmm. but now I mean we got through the worst of it for for Drupal 8, <laughs> so it's going to be better for the future but not it's not urgent anymore it was <laughs> <laughs> I think in regards to to smoke tests or um, general like in browser tests the job just running like something with requirement to have JavaScript enabled is just one side of it another side is um, when you're running headless tests for your application it's like it's essentially very far from from the real usage that people will oversee with application whereas run it through the browser it's getting as close as humanly possible with automation to run it exactly like people will use this application so it's not only about like having limitations with JavaScript and headless browsers it's also about understanding that headless browsers or headless simulation of the website browsing 
is is really really far from how people will use your website so if you have minimal amount of smoke tests running them through the browser can have some benefits even if you're not heavy on JavaScript and if you have unit tests on JavaScript So you said that you were going to do this more incrementally. Um, yeah. Does that mean that it maybe it can be put in Drupal 8 now that uh, the release cycle is different? Or is this still far in the future and we'll go in Drupal 9? Um, yeah, I, there's I no think 8. Yeah, there's no reason it couldn't be in 8. Like We're going to create a meta yeah. on converting the web test pace that we have now. And if people are keen and start porting them over it. There's no reason we couldn't get rid of simple yep. tests before nine. It's I just a matter of porting them over. I also believe that the um, this, the testing suite um, changing that isn't classed as an API breaking change either. So and and given it gets committed alongside, it's not breaking anything. Getting committed like that either. So yeah, it, it, it's definitely definitely eight worthy. Sweet. Um. Along those lines, do you actually need to convert existing tests? Um, well, no. <laughs> I mean, can you just I mean, like use mean like this new setup that you came up with for something new or for the breakages that you find? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so this is more kind of natural way to uh, upgrade to something else, right? Yeah. It's just like you still have your old test suite, you still run it. Yeah. But for everything new or every time you break something old, yeah. you migrate only this part to the new ones. So mm -hmm. this kind of will eliminate this crazy requirement for having like uh, incredible amount of hours spent yeah. or poured into this exercise, which maybe mm -hmm. never have never will have a value. Like yeah. you don't know if those things after transfer they will uncover some bugs, right? Yeah. You don't know like how many of those seven hundred or how many like. Yeah. Seven, seven, seventy-five thousand yeah. assertions actually save you from bugs. Yeah. Like, is it ninety percent? Is it fifty percent? Yeah. So just like transferring them and spending time into like upgrading them or migrating them, yeah. might never return on investment of this thing. That's true. Yeah. That's a yeah good point. Um, yeah, I want to try and measure how much our current simple tests actually covering in terms of code coverage in, in that regards. I want to see if I can get that working. Anyway. It's it's all recorded, buddy, <laughs> so you're yeah, you're contractually obligated to do it now. <laughs> so oh, uh Jibran asked how much time have we spent on it and it's a lot. <laughs> um hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of oh, hours. Because yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been going through and debugging what simple test does now, and when we were trying to initially make it so it was compatible with that. It's, de it's definitely 100 plus hours, like 100, 150 hours. I and this say. is what we were saying before, how Dries was talking about reducing the costs, and um, from speaking to Sun, he's put so much time into simple test, and it's for something that's not even core to what we do with Drupal, and so if we can get rid of that and use something that everyone's using in PHP. And if we want to improve it, we improve Mink for everyone, not just people using Drupal. So that's yeah. one of the motivators to why we started this. Because it's, it's like, we're doing it with the rest of Drupal. We've moved to using external third-party libraries and trying not to reinvent the wheel all the time. And that's what we decided. We went, this testing framework, it's from 2008. It started and... Uh, it's just one band-aid on top of another with that. So. 2007. Seven. Yeah. yeah. So. so, and assuming we don't port the old test to Mink, mm -hmm. like, uh, how fast would we get a Mink, uh, you know, runner available in core to write new tests? Oh, mm -hmm. we're hoping to get it into core ASAP. Uh, and time frame. Time frame. <laughs> <laughs> Because they'll just print on Friday. Yeah, yeah. I, I still think it's kind of pretty heavily coupled to um, to like the PHP unit component and being able to run that on the test bots. Um, 
So yeah, I, I think that's, but but we're we're making quite a lot of headway there as well. So that's why I really care about that that side of things as well. So, um, but but we could look at some like we could look at other options. Maybe maybe we can. Maybe we can. Hmm. Even locally, yeah, 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 absolutely. So we should we should definitely have a have a chat in the buff about about that. Maybe from both sides. I see Jeremy's in the back. He's got room to <laughs> come and have a chat. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Have you just been hiding the whole time? Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I. Yep. Yeah. You're not really. You're listed. But <laughs> so here you go. Simple test just lost last maintainer. <laughs> uh, yeah. So as in terms of you. getting rid of simple tests, I, I guess if we don't rewrite the tests, which is a totally valid way of doing it, um, as we move forward and get more unit tests and more kernel test base and then we go okay this is where we want to do smoke testing and just write them in on top of browser test base and then at that point there's no simple tests mm. anymore I, I completely agree with the method of yeah. doing it as things that's arise. by far the simplest way of doing it just naturally as we move forward and do more unit tests and kernel lower level testing just port them as we need them that's how you you would generally approach commercial project with legacy testing platform. Yeah. Like you would, nobody would ever um, spend this amount, this amount of crazy money on like just migrating the test suite. Mm. Yeah. The only reason why your guys are considering it is because of like your time is kind of free, which it is <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not very efficient way of doing things. No. Like you don't need to do that. Yeah, I gotta agree there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, it's easy when there's a couple of drinks and sitting down and hacking out some code. Hundred hours of drinks and code, though. I was thinking of automatically porting a few. Mm -hmm. So, um, if anyone's aware of Drupal module upgrade, it can automatically convert code. And that library I was mentioning that I'm the author of. Um, so you can get existing code and manipulate it and transform the code. So, could we even port some automatically? So. Uh, yeah, haven't actually seen what I've got to do there yet. Got to put your mad mad scientist lab <laughs> code on, are you? Okay. Cool. What are we? Oh, I think that's pretty much it. If no one has any other questions, I think that's now yeah, we're pretty much smack on time now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming. It's like, I'm out of here. So I think it's like 11 o'clock at night or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that, that worked out really well. Thanks for that. That's